country diggers here today i'm going to do a history on the hillbilly mountain dews how they got their labels how they got named mountain dew and um just the history of them this is big jim little right here and it's only a partial label i dug this one uh last year and these are like 19 uh let me see if I can get a date off of this. This one's a 1964. This one is a 1964. And I got two, two of these. Uh, it'll tickle your inter, innards and the hillbilly. This one is a 1966, I think. Uh, let me see. Yeah, 1966. This one, I got, I dug one of these last year and one of them this year. And this one is a 19, uh, this one's a 1966 too, so. I also have a dew shine right here. And after I do the hillbilly one, I'll do the dew shine one in uh, another video. But uh, the dew shine is, has a, a history to it too. And uh, there's the top right there. All right, y'all. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right. This is Mountain Dew's Roots in Hillbillies and Bourbon. Uh, this article is from the Knox News in 2019, and it's by Amy McRary from Knoxville, Tennessee. Mountain Dew, now the country's most third popular soft drink began because two Knoxville brothers needed a tasty mixer for their bourbon. That 1940s-style Mountain Dew didn't taste like today's lemon, citrus, caffeine, and sugar-charged drink. As clear as the moonshine whose moniker it borrowed, this dew tasted like today's 7-Up or Sprite. Years later, when Mountain Dew began tasting like today's Mountain Dew, <laughs> it was first called lemonade and sold in a clear bottle. Turning a Knoxville whiskey mixer into a soft drink to tickle your innards took mixology magic, business savvy, and a marketing campaign filled with gun-toting, jug-swilling, barefoot appellation hillbillies. Why do millions love Mountain Dew? Now, for me personally, I do not like the taste of Mountain Dew and never have, but I do like the bottles, and the, mar the marketing was brilliant in uh, their labels and everything. But anyway, today Mountain Dew is marketed as high-energy, high-performing beverage flavored by, favored by, among others, extreme sports athletes and race car drivers. But whatever its image, from barefoot mountaineers to adventurous snowboarders, Mountain Dew sales. Industry statistics show it's the third most popular liquid refreshment brand behind Coca-Cola and Pepsi. <clears throat> A new exhibit at the Museum of East Tennessee History traces Mountain Dew's regional roots and cultural connections it'll tickle your innards a hillbilly history of mountain dew runs through january 20th okay this was in 2019 so i guess it's over i think there is certainly something addictive to it right adam alfrey the east tennessee history center's operations manager and senior curator said about the drink's popularity but I also think they, Mountain Dew owners, have been very smart to shift their marketing at the right times. Have bourbon, need mixer. Mountain Dew started because Knoxville Brothers 
Barney and Ollie, which is spelled A-L-L-Y like Allie, but it's pronounced Ollie, O-L-L-I-E. Hartman needed the right mixer for their whiskey. The Hartmans managed an Orange Crush bottling com- uh, plant in Augusta, Georgia, shortly after World War I. The sons of German immigrants, they enjoyed an after-work drink of Old Taylor Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, mixed with the highly carbonated lemon-lime soft drink Natural Setup. Natural Setup advertised itself as delicious, sparkling, healthful, though its label included a pair of dice. When the Orange Crush plant went bankrupt in 1932, the Hartmans moved to Knoxville to help operate a plant at 1921 Magnolia Avenue. Smart businessmen who who had seen one plant fail, they diversified. They sold beer the minute Prohibition ended in 1933 and began selling Pepsi in 1934. As beer and Pepsi sold well, they dropped Orange Crush and became the Hartman Beverage Company. But one of their favorites, Natural Setup, wasn't sold in Knoxville. In the 1940s, the Hartmans set out to make their own version, mostly to mix with liquor. They asked Tip Corporation's master flavor mixer, William Henry, Billy Jones of Marion, Virginia, to formulate the right concentrate for the non-alcoholic carbonated beverage. The brothers occasionally bottled a few dozen cases of personal setup for themselves, employees, and friends. They weren't the first in Knoxville to make a carbonated do. Twenty years before, Hungarian immigrant Max Latish, L-I-C-H-T, briefly bottled dew drinks in eight-ounce bottles shaped like barrels, selling for a nickel. Leash's um, fav- flavors included grape dew, strawberry dew, and a sparkling white pure lemon, Mountain Dew. The Hartman's personal setup was clear with the lemon-lime flavor like 7-Up or Today's Sprite. One employee joked it was as good as Mountain Dew because when mixed with liquor, it tasted like a fine moonshine. As time went by, it would be that joke of a name, not the drink's flavor, that would last. Yahoo! Mountain Dew. Their Mountain Dew was such a hit among friends and family, the Hartmans decided to go public. They debuted Mountain Dew in deep green bottles at a 1946 Gatlinburg bottling convention. The bottles' paper paper labels depicted a barefoot, overall-clad hillbilly holding a rifle in one hand and a jug of moonshine in the other. Drawn by Hartman neighbor and high schooler John Bruschetto, the label implied the brothers hand-brewed the dew in a a candestaline steel. Mountain Dew strategy, strategy, (laughs) there's, there's that southern accent coming out right there, strategy, strategy, okay. Mountain Dew's strategy (laughs) rode the time's popular wave of Appalachian hillbilly marketing. Alfrey said, with taglines like Yahoo and it'll tickle your innards, the soft drink Mountain Dew built on the hillbilly image of the mid-20th century. Its hillbilly character, Grandpappy, was shown on later bottles shooting at a government revenuer running from an outhouse. <laughs> now, that was cool. Okay. 
Image great contents blah. Yeah, I don't like Mountain Dew. I like the bottles, not the Mountain Dew, not the drink. The Hartmans love their lemon lime Mountain Dew. The public didn't. It never really got off the ground, Alfre said. Um, it'd take the Tri City Beverage Company and a new taste to make Mountain Dew a hit. The Johnson City firm loved the dark green bottles and hillbilly imagery and got a franchise to make it. But their customers weren't keener, weren't any keener on that lemon lime flavor than those in Knoxville. Tri City had Billy Jones, the man who created the Hartman's Mountain Dew, made a lemon citrus soft drink in 1958. Loaded with caffeine and sugar, the drink was called Tri-City Lemonade. <clears throat> in 1960, Tri-City manager Bill Bridgeforth decided to bottle what was Tri-City in Mountain Dew's Green Hillbilly label bottles. He renamed the drink the New Mountain Dew. Gone was the Hartman's original lemon-lime drink. Gone was Tri-City Lemonade. Sales soared. Kids loved it, Alfre said. Mountain Dew began to compete with these similar, similarly fla uh, flavored Sundrop and inspired the 1979 creation of Mellow Yellow. Frankly, hillbilly appeal. In 1964, Pepsi bought Mountain Dew and the Tip Corporation. Pepsi's officials loved what one executive called the beverage's frankly hillbilly appeal. For a few years, the company built on that image. A larger hillbilly cabin was built in New York's Waldorf Estonia Ballroom during Pepsi Cola's 1964 bottling convention. There, Daisy May offered samples of Mountain Dew's Mountain Elixir. Can you imagine a, a hillbilly cabin in, in New York's Waldorf Astro, Estonia Ballroom? Hey, can you imagine them, them New York Yankees in there? <laughs> As the 1970s began, Pepsi dropped hillbillies but kept their bare feet. It switched Mountain Dew marketing to a Get That Barefoot Feeling campaign aimed at urban teens. Over the decades, Mountain Dew has changed its logo and its marketing strategy into today's swirl logo. The museum exhibit, the museum exhibit melts the history of corn whiskey Mountain Dew with the carbonated Mountain Dew. Artifacts include whiskey jugs from Knoxville saloons to an array of Mountain Dew bottles designed over the years to a promotional uh, grandpappy doll. A loop of commercials illustrates how Mountain Dew's been sold through the decades. Among the spots, how to promote the drink with Pepsi, Pepsi's Dorito chips. <clears throat> The Mountain Dew items in It'll Tickle Your Innards were gifted the museum by Dick Bridgeforth of Texas, son of the late Bill Bridgeforth. Bridgeforth wrote the book Mountain Dew, The History. It'll Tickle Your Innards is one of the two Mountain Dew dedicated East Tennessee displays this summer. East Tennessee State University Reese's Museum hosts a July 22nd, September 13th exhibit. exhibit. Okay, this, this was in 2019, so, uh, yeah, it's, it will not be now. <laughs> but, um, hope y'all enjoyed a little bit of, uh, Mountain Dew Hillbilly history, and, um, Next time, I'll do it on Dewshine, and uh, there's some uh, dark history to Dewshine, and, and I'll go into that later. All right, hope you all enjoyed. Bye.